Hey guys, how's it going? So this afternoon, we're gonna be working on several different things, starting with some boxwood trimming over here on the west side. So right behind me, we have been working quite a bit on this area, getting plants in the ground, and it's, it's coming along really beautifully. I'm really happy with it, but the boxwoods are a little wooly. See that? We've had so much rain too, that it's just kind of weighing the plants down a little bit. So what I wanna do is come in and just lightly shear the boxwoods, probably not on the top, but on the sides, just to tighten them up a little bit. And that way, because it's technically too late, I would say, to be trimming boxwoods at this point, that if I stay away from the top or don't do very much on the top, I think we'll avoid a lot of burn. You usually want to do your trimming earlier in the season. Like for us, where it's usually dry and hot, that means probably end of April, beginning of May-ish. Uh, we've had such a cool, rainy spring. I mean, still, like yesterday, it, it poured several different times during the day that it's kind of uh, relaxed the whole schedule of events in the garden, which is wonderful. It's been just a lovely, lovely spring. But that means I have some projects still hanging out. So we're gonna tackle that a bit today and then hopefully get to a little bit of planting, both a window box and maybe some in-ground stuff. Oh yeah, see right here? Like I usually have a distinct line between the uh, boxwood hedge. These are the sprinters and our green mountain cone right there. So I'll probably do a little bit more of a de little deeper trim right there, but you can see this is shaded by a maple tree. It's really just areas where your shrubs are gonna be really exposed to sun, where it's a little bit more of a concern. And I'll probably go after these too, just a little bit. Today's high is mid 70s, and then we have two more days like that before it heats up into the mid 80s, which is nothing for this time of year. So I think we'll be okay. Most years by mid June or toward the end of June, we are well into the hundreds. So this is just fantastic. And this is pretty much all I need, hedge trimmers. Do you guys follow anybody on Instagram or, or anywhere on social media that does topiary trimming? I follow, his name is James Todman on Instagram, and he does some really fun uh, trimming videos, like just mesmerizing. All right, guys, got the trimmers. There's the boxwoods. Let's get it done.
even though it's not a full trim, it does look a lot better. So starting here with this sphere, which looks pretty good, and I did the exact same thing, there's Russell, <laughs> with the sphere on the other end of the vegetable garden, and then tightened up the cones just a little bit. You know, I didn't fuss very much at all today. In fact, it looks like I missed a cone. <laughs> I think I might've missed that one right there. But really the goal for the day was basically to tighten up the edge along here, which I do think it looks a lot better. Oh, here comes the sun. So these are still growing and filling in. Like you can see some spots where they are thinner. So there are some places along this edge where I didn't even have to cut anything. Like I would set my blade down to where it was about three inches away from the base of the brick. And then I basically just walked. So like just walked along here, which means like you can see where it hasn't filled in between boxwoods yet. Uh, but there were some spots like right in here where I didn't have to trim anything because the blade just didn't touch anything right here. Uh, so that's gonna be that way until the boxwoods fill in a little bit more. They are doing surprisingly well, actually. These boxwoods had such bad spider mite damage last year. Uh, in fact, I even took a picture at the end of this winter and sent it to our, um, like the grower, and just said like, look at these boxwoods. Oh my word, <laughs> are these gonna pull out? Should I, should I start fresh? And they said, you know, it's probably a mixture of spider mite damage and some winter damage, which is totally possible, but they bounced so well this spring. And they push new growth but when I cut into some of the areas it did expose that damage again which I really didn't want to do but I think there's just going to be a couple of years until these are more established where I'm just dealing with a little bit of that so like right in here I did the same thing with my blade like you can see the individual boxwoods still until they grow a little bit bigger uh, but I took my blade and just ran it along the edge and then you can see right in here where I exposed some of that damage to see what the spider mites do. They're just like these little spiders that live in the plant and they suck the sap, all the juices from the leaves and leave it looking very, very mottled in appearance. So I'm not finding any living spider mites yet this year. I don't think it's been hot enough, uh, but we are going to be spraying these preventatively and we'll probably talk about that later. In fact, we've done a video about it before, uh, but we might try out some new things. I'm not real sure, but the new growth sure looks nice, doesn't it? And I didn't touch the tops. You can see that. So it's just like they're still a little wooly, but just tightened up enough to wear like if you side eye them, which <laughs> a lot of stuff in my garden, I'm like, if you just go buy it fast, just look at it the side of your eye, it looks pretty good. So that's what we were going for today and I think we got it. Uh, so we'll take a walk down here and I'll turn back around so you can see the other side of the boxwoods, but they look pretty good. I like having a line between the bricks and then a little space, a little mulch space before the boxwoods start. It's kind of like, I don't know, breathing space to me or something. I don't know if that is the right way to characterize it, but you might remember these boxwoods went in after because we didn't have enough. So I stopped our little formation right here. And then it was the next year or something, I put these in. So they're a little bit further behind. Okay, so as we look down this way, just tighten them up a little bit because before, like right here, they were leaned completely over from the rain. I actually see a spot where I could cut it a little bit more. I probably won't worry about it now. Let's see like right here. I feel like that could go off, but doesn't really matter at this point. They look pretty good to me. While I was at it, I did trim these lightly too. These had spider mites as well, but it looks good to have them tightened up a little bit. And all the way to the end here, I did trim up these as well. These are winter gems as opposed to sprinters. So sprinters are supposedly the improved version of winter gems. Like they grow faster, which I kind of have to agree with that. But what I'm noticing, the difference in growth habit anyway, is that winter gems seem to be more stiffly branched from bottom to top. Um, so they, the structure of them kind of holds, like when we're getting all this, these heavy rains, which you know our plants are not used to, they're holding up a little bit better than the sprinters did. Sprinters seem to be almost more vase shape. And I don't know if it's just mine or how I'm trimming them. I think over time, you know, the more you keep them down, the more you prune them, the more branch like side branches that they form. Um, but they don't seem to be doing it as quickly as the winter gems do. So they grow up like vase shape with a little bit more flex in their branches. So they have been weighing down a little bit more. Um, so I don't know if that has been any of your experience, but uh, they are beautiful, looking really good. And I'm so happy with how they bounced from all of the spider mite issues that they had last year. So far, the green mountain boxwoods have performed the best in terms of not getting spider mites and not getting any winter color or damage. 
So like part of me thinks, should I just be planting green mountains everywhere and just making them into a hedge? Also the North Star boxwoods, let me show those to you. They're more like the green mountains. Um, and I planted a little kind of micro hedge by our back kitchen area. They are much bigger than when I planted them. So look at this right here. These seem to hold their color really nicely and they stay this nice green. They don't bronze like some of the others do. Hey bud. Anyway, I did trim these up a little bit earlier. They are looking really nice, I think. Really nice. Also, side note, complete different subject. I thought I had lost one of our pink mink clematis. I think it was the center one. And it's totally fine. I didn't replace it. It's just doing its thing now. It just needed a little extra time, but they are filling up with buds. I'm excited to see how they do. This whole area has filled in just beautifully. Just beautiful, love it. Okay guys, so the next project we're gonna work on today is our kitchen window box. Let me just pop over here since we're over here anyway. We've got some lemon cypress in here. These are from our spring planter. You'll notice that we cleaned everything else out. In fact, it has been cleaned out for a while. Uh, but the other ones, I just popped pansies in here. I just got six packs of pansies and it didn't take very many to fill these window boxes and they still look so good. I think I'm gonna do this every spring. Look at this. Like they're just so gorgeous and so simple and clean and low maintenance because pansies can go a while between waterings, which is awesome. And this one has a little bit more of a mix of color. Side note to our side note, uh, I did pick some of these, uh, are they the Coral Charm? Yes, Coral Charm, Charm peonies, and they're absolutely phenomenal, gorgeous, but they kind of smell. We had to bring them outside. <laughs> So this is where they've lived. Anyway, we had hyacinths, daffodils, um, violas, some saxifrage in here. It was absolutely phenomenal. We enjoyed it so much. Uh, and it's really fun that we're able to use the lemon cypress again. So we'll just have them in here for summer, probably fall and probably winter. So I'm just gonna go gather some things. I don't have anything in particular that I got for this window box. It's gonna be kind of a, like just cobble together what I can cobble that can take shade. <laughs> the Wicked Witch Coleus would be quite nice in there, I think. Yeah, I think that that'll look pretty simple, but pretty. goodness isn't that beautiful now if you've ever grown the uh, color blaze coleus called wicked witch which is what this one is you might be thinking that i will regret my decision here <laughs> there are six of them in here but i don't think so this is gorgeous it might create a little bit of extra work for us though so we'll probably have to go in and pinch back stems which just means basically popping it off above a set of leaves just to keep it in check, but this is full shade. I mean, it gets a tiny slice of morning sun, um, so it will naturally stay a little bit smaller than if it was getting more light. Then we have double up pink begonias, which there are five of those. So one between each one of the coleus and the double ups do so well for us, so well. Doesn't matter if they're in a container, in the landscape, they just are awesome. In fact, these are gonna be going in, well, if I ever clean those out, I do have more of these to use in window boxes because they're just so wonderful. And then to top it off, we used a whole bunch of wire vine. So six of those, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six of those just to give that really soft kind of drapey feel. And those will put on growth and start draping a little bit more than they are now. But I am just really pleased with this arrangement. Okay, last area we're gonna plant today is in front of the chicken coop.
love how this turned out. Well, first of all, the Zephyrine is blooming and looking absolutely gorgeous. The Oh So Easy, these are uh, peachy cream, just started to bloom. And if you take a close look, you can see how many buds are on this plant. I mean, they are just absolutely loaded. So they start blooming and then just kind of keep on blooming. I do have space to do something right in here, but I need it to be something a little bit taller. So I'll probably pop something in there eventually. But there is a Miss Violet Budlia right here, which it looks so pretty when the Zephyrine's blooming for the second time. Usually this one is purple and gorgeous with the pink. And then we've got the peach, and then we put in a few truffle of pink gumfrina. So we've got one here, one here. They get enormous, so I gave it space. Cat's Pajamas Nepeta still going for it. And then there are two more truffle pinks right here and here. And then I went in with five unplugged So Blue salvias. So these don't get as big, like 14, 20 inches tall. Uh, so, you know, I could have gone ahead with the truffle of pink, but I think like right here, it looks like the salvia is competing with the roses and it will be a little bit, but I kind of like, especially since it's an annual, I'll be able to pull that out, but it's gonna be really pretty to see those intermingling together. I like those colors. And then just the whole front with Supertunia Bordeaux, which is, has been and will probably always be one of my favorite Supertunias because I love the color. I think it's just so pretty. You also notice that we still have spring plants in here because they still look good. Pansies, violas, there's a couple of lettuce left. I've been feeding them to the chickens, but there's one right there. Um, this area here traditionally has been a full sun area, but now that we have the avalanche birch growing, we now have the maple tree over here. And then of course we've got the ash uh, right above us here. It doesn't get quite as much sun as it used to. And things are doing okay right now because it's early enough in the season, but they might kind of start to struggle here unless they get more light than I'm thinking, like right through here. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it, um, but I didn't plant anything in there today. And that is gonna be it for today. I actually need to go water. When I went and picked up those salvias, they were so dry. I had to water them before I brought them over here. Uh, so I'm gonna go get that done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm super happy with everything that we accomplished this afternoon. I mean, the boxwoods, I've been looking at in the last few days and I thought, you know, if I don't take after them now, I'm gonna lose every opportunity I have until fall. Um, so I'm really happy that they're looking a little bit more tidy. And then of course, adding some color here and there is always fun. And we've got quite a bit more of that to do over the next week or two um, to get everything filled up with summer annuals. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Cheddar, I see you eyeballing stuff. Cheddar, hey, kitty kitty, what are you doing?